The first wine is Palazzo La Torre, so it's the house wine, we can say here. And uh, Palazzo La Torre has been the first single vineyard ever produced in the Valpolicella region in the middle 70s. Wow. Because at that time the concept of a single vineyard wine was absolutely not uh, of the area. And uh, my grandfather, when he bought uh, this place, he decided to make uh, out of this a single vineyard wine in order to celebrate the, the, the property and uh, um, very nice characteristic that we can get from these grapes. We, we can describe it as the Allegrini interpretation of the ripasso method mm -hmm. because uh, when we started the production of this wine it was made with the ripasso technique and uh, then since our uh, aim in producing a wine is always to maintain a great elegance and a great finesse, we have realized that with the ripasso sometimes it is a little bit difficult to maintain this. Okay, just to clarify, the ripasso yeah. normally is to use the, the skins and pomace of the, um, of the Amarone yes. grapes and to add them unpressed to the Valpolicella. Exactly. And to re-ferment the wine. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. But so in fact ripasso the, means re-fermentation literally. I see. Yeah. I see. And and in fact most of the, the tannin um, and the flavour has already been leached out of the first fermentation in the Amarone. So in fact you're really only just adding more tannin um, but more of the, the bitter tannins perhaps. Absolutely. I see. I see. So what and have you done to... In fact, my, grand, my uncle, which is the, the winemaker, Franco, is always saying that uh, the traditional ripasso is like to use a tea bag twice, basically. I see, yeah. <laughs> so it's a very <laughs> nice way to make people understand. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all the best has gone into the Amarone. So with the second fermentation, of course, you get something, but as you told, there are mainly bitter tannins and sometimes uh, the ripasso, the second fermentation was a little bit compromising the fruit character of the grapes. And we ended up in decided that instead of doing the second fermentation by using the pomas of the Amarone, we are adding to the fresh wine mm -hmm. basically one third of dried grapes. Okay. And, and so this preserves the freshness? Of but, course. But it, it's enough to sort of add the, the, the sugar and the flavor and the yeah, tannins. Absolutely. The, the fruity tannins, let's say. Yeah. Uh, for the second fermentation. So instead of using fermented skins, we are using new dried grapes. Okay. So we are drying the grapes uh, the same uh, way we do for the Amarone. We just dry them shorter because we don't want to concentrate too much. So this is not only giving, uh, like the traditional ripasso, more tannins and more structure, but it's giving the wine a complexity which is very difficult to find mm -hmm. in a regular ripasso. And also, um, longevity. I think. Technique, I think. It is, yeah, it is okay. the ricciotto. Ricciotto, so it's the sweet the end. <laughs> we can, okay. we can really say it's the sweet end. Uh -huh. And uh, the ricciotto is the oldest wine of the region because um, the production of a wine which was uh, a sweet wine made with dried grape is dated back in the Valpolicella region from to the Roman times. I see. And at that time, the wine was called Retico. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the tradition of drying the grapes uh, in the area is, uh, is dated back to that time. So oh. it's very, very old. And uh, like the Amarone, it is produced with 100% of dried grapes. As we told, uh, the Arecciotto is actually the origin of the father of the Amarone. I see, yeah. And uh, the only difference between the drying process of Amarone and of Arecciotto is that for the Arecciotto, we dry the grapes a little bit longer because mm -hmm. the intention is to obtain a sweet wine, so we are looking for a higher concentration of sugar. I see. So while the, dry, the, sorry, the vinification time of Amarone is more or less the middle of January, mm -hmm. with the Recciotto we go until the middle end of February. Wow, so an extra month of drying. Yes, so we, we can say that with the Amarone we lose between uh, 35-40% of the original weight of the grapes, while with the ricciotto we go up to 50%. That's incredible. It's a, it's a beautiful colour, it's very saturated, it's a very deep colour. And the nose is, is uh, coffee and dried fruits and, and spice, it's, it's a beautiful combination. Yeah. With the ricciotto it's very very important to maintain a, a, a nice level of acidity. Mm -hmm. Because with this great sweetness and with this great concentration, 
if you don't have a nice acidity level, the wine will become too opulent and not very pleasant. I see. It's a wonderful drink and an absolutely unique style of Valpolicella. Yeah. Um, what is the best way to appreciate this wine? What foods would you serve with them? So first of all, the ricotto, we always suggest to serve it slightly chilled. Okay. And not room temperature because uh, you, I think it's more enjoyable if it's uh, two or three degrees less. Okay, Petra, so we're here in your, your tasting room, your cellar door, and um, straw wine is such a distinctive wine in, in the world of wines. Um, how do you make your wine so that you, you, you get this uh, unique flavour and, and texture and, and taste? The technology of the production of wine is a complex problem, and it's a problem that starts in the vineyard. We collect it and collect it with a healthy and very vizrálé hrozny, které se potom uloží na slámu, kde leží a vysychají minimálně tři měsíce, ale většinou se vysouší pět měsíců. OK. You, you specialize in uh, straw wine, not just white wines, but also red wines as well. For example, you have a Frankovka uh, straw wine. This is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful and very unique wine in, in the world. Can you describe it for me, please? Tak uh, Frankovka Slámové z ročníku 2004 uh, je ovocná, velmi plná, harmonická, protože samozřejmě u, u těchto vín jde o absolutní harmonii, protože uh, už je tam vysoký obsah zbytkového cukru. A k tomu musí být uh, dostatečně pevná a šťavnatá kyselinka a samozřejmě i určitá úroveň alkoholu. Takže vždycky jde o tu celkovou harmonii toho vína. I, I really appreciate the, the low alcohol, uh, fruit driven style of this wine that can age for many years. But uh, I guess I have a question for you, Peter. What foods would you pair with this wine? Pro archivaci jsou tato vína v podstatě nesmrtelná a jsou velmi vhodná do vysoké gastronomie, zejména k desertům anebo pokrmům typu foie gras. Sounds like a wonderful suggestion. I, I personally love sweet wines with foie gras. Uh, Petra, thank you very much for sharing with us your experience as a straw wine producer here in, in South Moravia and we look forward to seeing you again very soon.